Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video. Today, maybe from the title or maybe from my makeup, you'll have gathered that we are doing a palette review and we are talking about the Melt Cosmetics Radioactive palette. This was released um, just a while ago. I think it was the latest released from them and it was a little bit controversial because Melt already had a radioactive stack. Um, one of their uh, round pans with a bigger single eyeshadow stacked on top of each other magnetically and there were four shades in that stack and uh, that was I don't remember if exactly it was limited edition to start with, but that once it was sold out, it was impossible to get your hands on. This summer, when the um, neon trend came back, uh, Huda Beauty started releasing neon palettes, then there were neon singles coming out. I was actually looking for the best neons on the market and what kept coming up was these Melt Cosmetics radioactive stack shadows. And I was like, okay, 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 maybe let me find it. There were sales here and there, let me find it. It was impossible to find. That stack was sold out and it was gone. And the reason why is that they brought out this one. Now in the radioactive palette, you have a, um, yeah, let's say I wanted to say traditional melt cosmetics eyeshadow palette, but they've done a few different formats. Let's say this is the smaller one, same size as the Smoke Sessions palette, and it contains eight shades. Four of these, these first four, are the same ones contained in the stack. Starting with that, big controversy because for those like me who missed the stack, it was like super exciting because we could get the same shades again. For those who had the stack instead, it was, yeah, buying a palette from Melt, which is not inexpensive, and paying for four shades that you already have. And I know from, for example, my friend Yori from uh, uh, Personal Beauty Lab, um, she is still on the fence whether to get this or not because of this issue. I am one of those lucky ones who don't have the stack and wanted it, so when this one released, I was extremely excited, very patient, and I waited for it to come to Beauty Bay, purchased it the moment it came out because I knew it would sell out. It didn't, I think. Not the same situation as the Gemini, and I understand why. Let's say it's not the most wearable palette out there. And for me, it was a conscious decision because um, these are very exciting shades, the quality is very good and the reviews for the stacks were very good so I said well let me get this, I love my melt palettes that I have so far so let me get this. I purchased it from Beauty Bay, the price is 45 euros and it contains 14.5 grams of product over 8 eyeshadows, so just shy of uh, 2 grams of product per eyeshadow and it's beautiful. Now, um, I have played with this now a little bit. I know I spoke into my haul and a few different videos that I hadn't yet, but in the meantime I did and honestly, I don't leave the house when I use this, of course, like I have two looks today. I did two looks that you will have seen last week for my Halloween in Chaos challenge that I'm doing on Instagram with a bunch of other girls. There's um, specific looks you can use this with. There's also ways to make it more wearable. And let me know if you wanna see this, but probably you'll just see this, uh, these shadows sprinkled into my looks when I feel like a crazy pop of color. Um, and Let's get into the review of these eyeshadows. Now, first thing that I was uh, extremely impressed about is the packaging. It is, again, this very thin, well-weighted palette with a nice magnet and a beautiful artwork on the inside and on the outside. The outside is a little bit textured, so not a smooth, glossy finish. And on the, the artwork on the inside is on a glossy cardboard and it's absolutely beautiful with all the crushed um, pigments in it. Um, a thing to mention is indeed these are pigments, not eyeshadows. So that is for you to decide whether they are safe for you to use on the eyes. I have not experienced any uh, irritation with these. It, um, the pink, I have yet to see how much is gonna 
stain me because I have used all the uh, blues and the purples a little bit more than the pink so I have yet to see if it's gonna stain me but I'll know today and add the text to here whether it does or not um, but I have never had a problem with using pressed pigments on my eyes also regulations in the US and uh, Europe are different in Europe these are allowed on the eye area whereas in the US regulation has not been updated um, recently so these are not yet uh, allowed for the eye area to my understanding one thing I was surprised of with these eyeshadows is that they look all matte or mostly matte but they aren't there is only one matte eyeshadow and that is the shade meltdown which is this deep teal um, shade and the rest all has a little bit of shimmer and that you'd say why would you do that it's actually the perfect caveat to get um, very dry pigments to blend and uh, um, attach to the skin nicely so you might have, for example, some other neon eyeshadows or pigments that are very chalky and that is because adding um, dry binder to the eyeshadow to make it matte and blendable, that will then make the shade chalky and um, this is as far a formulation as I understand, adding pearl always helps. Pearl is a little bit more sticky and it helps with blending and adherence to the, to the skin. So. Yeah, I think that they did a great job with adding this little bit of pearl. I have to say you can see it, especially when blending the eyeshadows on the brow bone, for example, you will see a little bit of the sheen, but it's not particularly offensive. And these are not metallic to a point that you say, I want um, a very metallic sheen. This is not the shade for you. It's not glitter. It is really a satin, a little bit of pearl to make it more um, yeah, blendable as I said. The only eyeshadow that is really um, the only eyeshadow that is really a shimmer and I have used now on my inner corner here um, wet is this lavender shade down here called Uranium. This is the sheerest of the whole palette and I had to build it up quite a bit to get a complete coverage. On the other hand, in um, a different look, when I blended it out, it made for a beautiful gradient and uh, yes, a little bit more sheeny than uh, what I'm, uh, what I like because I have hooded eyes. I don't want shimmer on my hood usually. Um, I didn't mind it at all. It made for a very nice eyeshadow. Let's put it that way. My favorites as you can imagine are these middle four right here. I am wearing the yellow in my inner corner today. It's a beautiful, very saturated canary yellow, fantastic eyeshadow. Um, the uh, acid green, this um, neon green is very pigmented. You can see it in my inner corner here. You can see it on my Instagram, on my Monsters Inc. Uh, look used all over. It has a little bit of a sheen, but it blends beautifully. It builds up beautifully. It's very pigmented. I really, really love it. And I love the two teals and that's what I'm wearing on this eye here. And they are really, really beautiful. The deep teal is the color that I wanted everything to be. It's the color of my soul. I don't know. It's actually very close to the color I have on the wall in my bedroom that you might have seen in my latest uh, closet declutter, maybe actually, um, or in my previous, anyways, fashion videos. Fashion? I wouldn't call them fashion clothes videos because you have that in my background. But I love this teal eyeshadow. I am super happy with it. The orange and the pink beautiful but not something I use very often so not something I am particularly excited about and not something that I will use very often um, and the purples I have to say uh, the deep purple is very beautiful I have it on my outer corner but that was the only shade that gave me a little bit of trouble in blending so maybe because it's a purple and those are notoriously difficult or maybe because um, yeah, I don't know. I tried to blend it a little bit too far and because it's a pressed pigment, uh, that was not the easiest thing to uh, use. But uh, nonetheless, I think it works very well. Blend it out with the pink. 
it worked very nicely. That the dark purple also has a slightly more uh, pearl than the other eyeshadows and I saw some looks by one of the founders of Melt with just a very deep purple smoky eye with the darker purple on the eye and then blended with the lavender. Absolutely beautiful. So if that is a color that you love, this is very, very pretty. Now, as you can tell, I am very enthusiastic about this palette. I am very positively surprised. And the reason is I've had some bad luck with neons this summer when I was buying neons here and there. I wanted to use them more. I wanted to do more with neons. And um, I want to show you a few comparisons in swatches between these from the Melt Radioactive and the ones that I have in my collection. Okay, let's start from the top. I'm just gonna compare these shades with the neons I have in my collection. So starting with the shade Radioactive, which is this neon pink. I'm trying not to break eyeshadows in the process. I will be comparing it to the shade Sandbar by Colourpop. That's the closest thing I have, which is already making a big mess. Now, um, Sandbar is a matte. Honestly, now it's everywhere. Sandbar is a matte, uh, whereas Radioactive is a satin. You can see here on the top the shade Radioactive and on the bottom the shade Sandbar. Here they are. Sorry, I had to move things around so that I make sure I, you can see it. Um, here you can see clearly how uh, Radioactive has a little bit more shimmer and Sandbar, uh, because it is a matte, kind of pulls a little bit darker when you have it on your skin. I think both of them are very valid shades. I really like it. Um, the only thing is that Sandbar, because it's a matte and it's very, it's not chalky in the application, but when you pick it up, it has a lot of kickback and uh, it goes everywhere. So these are these two. The other fuse I have is in the Huda Beauty Neon Orange palette and it's this shade right here. It's not exactly the same shade, but I wanted to show you the difference anyways. And this is a bit more purple and it is a matte as well. And here it is. This is also a formula I really like. Um, the shade difference is a little bit there, but I uh, definitely don't think you need all three. Maybe I should have done this before I bought my own, the palette, like one of these uh, anti-haul dupe the palette type of thing. But <laughs> here we have three neon pinks. Continuing down the radioactive palette, we have the shade Radon, which is a neon orange. Again, this time comparing it with Colourpop O, ooh, O, three O's. <laughs> this is a purely matte shadow and it feels, compared to Sandbar, instead very, very dry. So I'm actually rubbing quite a bit to get product on there. And now let's swatch it. Here you have them compared right here. I feel like I, yeah. You can see the difference again in a little bit of sheen in the radioactive stack uh, palette one and a matte on the ColourPop one. And the shade brilliancy and vibrancy is much higher because of it. So if I had to choose a need, I do prefer the um, radioactive palette orange in this case. It is very vibrant and very pigmented. On the eyes, the difference in these is actually quite striking. You really need to build up the Colourpop one, whereas the Melt one just goes on super pigmented in one swipe. It is very, very nice quality um, eyeshadow. In the um, Huda Beauty Neon palette, you have three different oranges, but they're like not really close at all. Maybe the top one, I'll swatch the top one for you. But um, as you have heard me say multiple times, the quality of this is really, really good. So I wouldn't skimp uh, on it uh, for any reason. Now it's getting difficult. The further down my arm we go to swatch because ain't nobody have time to wax arm hair. Anyways, um, here you can see it. It is a little bit less pigmented in swatches, but it uh, performs really well on the eyes as well. 
I'm gonna switch hands from the for the next one and we're going in with a yellow the shade is called neon and I have a lot of yellows that I love um, you may have seen uh, earlier in the year I did a all of my yellow um, single eyeshadow video so I have a lot of beautiful beautiful yellows this one here feels a bit gritty under the um, the hand but you can see that it has a nice sheen my favorite yellow of all time is sugar pill butter cupcake which is a matte and it is a true canary yellow this doesn't swatch the best that I know it's also I feel like every time I swatch it I kind of give it a little bit of a hard pan so I'm not absolutely ecstatic about doing this every time. Then we have Colourpop Take Flight, which is a great yellow that I love. And that goes right here. And then I think... And then one of my favorite yellows of all time, which is this yellow right here in the Huda Beauty uh, Neon Orange palette, which is probably the truest neon of these, uh, the most neon of these, but it's also a little bit deeper. So there we go. And you can see a little bit the difference. These bottom three are all matte and this one here has a little bit of a sheen. I think you can build it up to make a very nice sunny all over the lid yellow shade. But this, this here is your comparison. For a stain test of the pink and orange, I think it's interesting. I will just wipe this like this. I don't know what the result will be because I expect all of these to stay in my hand. But um, as you can see, I don't have a particular uh, one stain on it that is a swipe. Um, my whole hand is a little bit orangey looking. <laughs> this is also super pretty wipe, by the way, by now. In between, I always dry my hands as well because I find that it actually impacts the swatches if um, the hand is wet from a wipe, same goes with the fingers when you swatch. Moving on to the green, which is the shade Xenon, and it is one of my favorite things ever. Here it is, up here, beautiful green, and I wanted to show you one of my biggest disappointments, which is the shade Keep Scrolling by uh, Colourpop. I bought this because I thought this would solve all of my neon green wishes, but you can already see on my finger it is extremely patchy and chalky and it doesn't show up. I hope you can see it. It's terrible. Such a disappointment. Also on the eye, it's really not pigmented. It doesn't stick. It's very patchy, but I think by now you can see it. I have three more light neony greens in my collection and these are from Lethal Cosmetics. We have Void, Vertex and Relapse and if you look at the shade I think Relapse is probably the closest so that is what I'm gonna um, swatch for you. Uh, the Lethal Cosmetics eyeshadows are also have also great great quality so I really cannot complain about it and um, you should check out my review of them, but I have a bunch of their eyeshadows and I really, really like it. You can find the video up in the cards. And here are these three, and you can see that um, neon greens like this are oftentimes very sh sheer and light, whereas I really like how in the radioactive palette, it's like, it's, it's there. It's a shadow that is there, and you can see on the inner part of my eye, it's really, permanent you can see it and you will see it on the eye i think this is one of my as i mentioned already favorite eyeshadows of this palette the next shade is arsenic which is this beautiful teal this is quite a bit more shimmery than the other shades we've seen so far but yet again a beautiful medium aqua which is absolutely beautiful it blends really well it has no problem whatsoever i am wearing it all over the um, outer crease out here and here you can see for example if I, I hope you can see it in the screen i can see it in the mirror that you can see a sheen right here and that is 
the shimmer in this eyeshadow. I don't have a lot to compare it to. One is Muscle Beach by Colourpop, a matte shade. I don't even know if it's still available. Also patchy, not my favorite. I don't use it very often because it's very difficult to get a nice blend out of this. A bit patchy um, and it kind of just gives me this idea that Colourpop just can't make these very well. And the other eyeshadow, also difficult to use uh, and I have used very little in the many years I had it, have it, is Dragonfly by Makeup Geek. And this is also a matte. And this is what I meant when I said that the idea of putting, of putting pearls inside these eyeshadows was not a bad one at all from Melt's point of view because you make really nicely blendable eyeshadows compared to the others that I have in my collection that are matte. So it's a little bit shiny, a little bit satiny, but it doesn't really take away anything from the eye look. Next is my favorite shade in the radioactive stack and we'll do it on my other hand because this one's full and it is the shade Meltdown. I just love it. Look at how deep and rich it is. And it is right here. And the first thing I wanted to compare it to is actually Axis from the uh, Subculture palette because Axis is also one of my favorite shades of teal. Um, so here it is. It is definitely a bit deeper and a little bit more blue you can see from the comparison side by side. I actually didn't think that would be so um, striking of a difference. Um, I do prefer uh, the way the shade in the radioactive palette behaves. Um, as we all know, subculture has its challenges, whereas um, I can actually apply and blend this, this one out very, very nicely. And I, ha I have a full teal tutorial, so there are more shades like this in my collection, but if I had to compare them all, I would be here all day. I will link my teal makeup uh, collection and tutorial in the cards up here and then uh, you can go check out the other shades that I have like that in my collection but uh, these two are the ones that remind me the most of each other in pigmentation, richness of color, etc. Next is this deep purple called Hazmat and I don't even know if I have something that comes even close to this. You can see even better here how this one has a purple base and almost an ultraviolet blurple sheen on top. And I think that's what they did to make it a little bit more uh, blendable because such a deep purple is very difficult to make. I can show you the comparison with Poison Plum by Sugar Pill. They make the best colorful mattes, but it will not be even close to the color. So. Uh, this is my only other, I think, purple neon that I have. Looking into my um, ra self-made rainbow palette, it's not the one that Colourpop sells. Um, we have this shade here, which is called 143, which is even less purple, um, and a, or less blurple and a bit more berry. And I was thinking that maybe the Jaclyn Hill palette the, this purple right here might come. My battery died, let's see how far we got. Uh, the next shade is Uranium, which is this Lavender Shimmer shade right here. And I'll put it right here. Well, I actually have yellow from the previous swatches underneath my watch. And here you have it. I want to show you in comparison a lilac from uh, Lethal Cosmetics and I think this middle one right here is the one to look at and it's the shade Release. This is a matte lilac which I have used once and it had really impressed me for the pigmentation that it had but you can see that it's a little bit more gray and a little bit more muted mainly because of the shimmer of uh, uranium that it is so uh, yeah striking. You can see it on my eyes right now. And from Makeup Geek, the shade Daydreamer is my so far most striking lilac shade, but it is much lighter and definitely a bright, bright uh, shimmer, as you can see here. It kind of 
yeah, it's a different application. It's a different, um, yeah, what you, what you want to do with these shades is quite different. Um, so yeah, here are all my comparisons. Overall, if you're looking for colorful um, palettes that has really striking quality eyeshadows and a little bit of variation and shades, I think this one is great. I am loving the looks that I'm creating with it. I know that I'll be able to do a lot with it in combination with other looks, uh, with other palettes of course, because I don't wear neon eyeshadows just like this. I will definitely be wearing the yellow by itself. I will definitely be wearing the orange. I might combine uh, this palette with the other melt palettes I have, especially uh, Smoke Sessions has these shimmery greens up here that fit very well. Today I have this middle one on my lid right here and I think it works really, really well together. But if you have colorful eyeshadows, I don't think you need to go and pay 45 euros for it. it. This is a nice to have, definitely not a necessity, definitely you can live without it. It is a bit of a crazy palette, but if you're in the market for it, go for it. It's really, really good. For the same price though, imagine that you can also get something like the colored rain palette and in here you have 16 shades. Um, I think the vibe here is much more different and the idea is much more different. There's no neon emphasis, but you have a lot of matte, bright eyeshadows here. So I think overall, I am very happy with it. I think the quality is fantastic. You can do a lot with this palette and uh, overall it's very fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this review and it was helpful. Let me know in the comments down below if you need any other comparisons and uh, I'll be happy to send them to you in DM or something like that. I am always here for dupes and comparisons. Overall, I'm super happy with the palette. Let me know if you purchase it or are going to and how this palette compares for you in your mind with the new Amor Eterno Vida y Muerte palettes that are coming out with Black Friday. I am thinking of doing a dupe or anti-haul for those two palettes for myself because I have a feeling I can dupe them already, but I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments down below if it's something you would be interested in. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content and would like to see more. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.